All right, here we are with the June 2010 exam, page 13. We're working these problems out in the answer booklet. Question 55. A 6 ohm resistor or a 4 ohm resistor are connected in series with a 6 volt battery in an operating electric circuit. A voltmeter is connected to measure the potential difference across the 6 ohm resi uh, resistor. In a space, draw a diagram of the circuit, including the battery, resistors, and voltmeter using symbols. Label each resistor with its value. Assume the variable on any number of wires of negligible resistance. All right. Well, here's the uh, circuit symbols. There's a battery. And here's a voltmeter. And here's a resistor. So we start on with the 6 ohm resistor. And then we go in series. So we're connecting in series to a 4 ohm resistor. So a straight line with no circuit options. 4 ohms. And they're connected in series with the battery. Now it might be to your advantage to just go ahead and draw the battery. It's connected to measure potential difference. And it uh, operates an electric circuit, which means there has to be a complete path back to the beginning. And that would give you your complete path back, and that would make it an electric circuit. And that would work. And there's a voltmeter across the 6 ohm resistor. Now voltmeters, here's the picture for the voltmeter. Now keep in mind that these lines really represent conductive paths or wires. So we want it connected either side of the resistor. There's a lot of ways you could have done it. This way kind of draws it in a kind of a parallel where the things are parallel to each other. But in fact, it's a series circuit because there's only one path. Keep in mind the voltmeter is not part of a circuit. 6 ohms, 4 ohms, and oh wait a minute, oh I forgot the 6 volt battery. Ah, see that's why it's always good to go back and look at these things a little bit more carefully. Question 56. When a spring is compressed 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters from its equilibrium position, the total potential energy stored in the spring is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 2 joules. Calculate the spring constant of the spring, showing all work including the equation and substitution with units. So we start off by listing our knowns. I can look up on my formula sheet and find that x is the change in spring length. So the compression or stretching. But we're going to use the variable x. So we're going to say that x is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. And that's a distance. The total potential energy stored in the spring, potential energy in the spring, is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 2 joules. <laughs> Calculate the spring constant. Again, if I forget, I can just go look and just search through and spring constant. K, okay, spring constant. There it is. I'm looking for K. So now I find me a formula that has potential energy of a spring and it's one-half kx squared. So now I have to write my equation. Potential energy is equal to one-half kx squared. And at this point I always do my algebra. I want to get k by itself, so I get rid of the one-half by multiplying by two. Two potential energy is equal to kx squared. I want to get k by itself, so I divide both sides by x squared. Then I can plug in two times 1.25 times 10 to the negative 2 joules divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters and don't forget to square that. That's equal to K. All of this is worth one point. The list of knowns, the formula, and substitution with units. The correct answer is worth the other point and you just need your calculator for that. And the answer I get is going to be 40 joules per, and now my units are going to be meters squared. Now you think, well, that's not spring constant. 
but in fact, technically it is. Dimensional analysis says it's got to be joules per meter squared. So let's look at this briefly. A joule, joule per meter squared, a joule is simply a newton meter. So now it could be newton meters per meter squared. We lose this and then we get newtons per meter, which is kind of what we used to get for spring constant. Newton. Okay, questions 57 and 58 pertain to this information. Uh, 3.5 meter length of wire, cross-sectional area of 3.14 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared is at 20 degrees Celsius. The current in the wire is 24 amps connected to a 1.5 volt source. They want me to determine the resistance of the wire and calculate the resistivity of the wire. Show all work. Length, 3.5 meters. Cross-sectional area, 3.14 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. Do not forget your units. Temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. The current in the wire, current is 24 amps. And the voltage across the wire is 1.5 volts. In this case, I believe they want you to say resistance is, and using Ohm's law, which is V equals I times R, so R would be equal to V divided by I and V would be 1.2 volts, I would be 24 amps. Get your calculator out and calculate a resistance of 0.05 ohms. Resistance is equal to resistivity, which is, comes from this chart. It's the letter rho. They want to know the resistivity. So, resistance is equal to resistivity times L divided by A. So, resistance is equal to resistivity times length divided by A. So, we write out the equation. Then we do algebra. First thing I always do is multiply by A, because that's where everybody makes mistakes. Resistance times area is equal to resistivity times length. And then you divide both sides by length to get resistivity by itself. So RA divided by L, my resistance was 0.05 ohms. My area was 3.14 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. And my uh, length was equal to 3.5 meters. The temperature information was uh, because in this chart they only want resistivities at 20. So it's uh, possible we could even identify what this material is. We've got our knowns listed, the formula we plugged in with units, we get that point, and for the second point we need our calculator. And I'm getting a resistivity of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 8, and let's see... Ohm. Ohm meters. Ohm meters. And when I go look on resistivity, ohm meters is uh, the appropriate unit. Question 59 and 60 oh, yeah, is based on the information below. Experiment 0 0.028 kilogram rubber stoppers attached to one end of a string. Student whirls a stopper overhead in a horizontal circle with a radius of one meter. We used to do a lab like this until kids started hitting themselves, so we stopped it. The stopper completes ten revolutions in ten seconds. Determine the speed of the whirling stopper for one point. Second one, calculate the magnitude of the centripetal force on the whirling stopper. Show all work, including the equation substitution with units. Well, since how two parts, we're going to have to list our knowns. Let's go ahead and start listing our knowns now. Mass is equal to 0 0.028 kilograms, about uh, 28 grams. Really shouldn't hurt anybody, even if you hit yourself with it. A student whirls a stopper overhead in a horizontal circle. The radius of the circle is equal to 1 meter. The stopper completes 10 revolutions. Distance is equal to 10 times the circumference, and the time is equal to 10 seconds. 
And for one point, I want to know the velocity. Well, velocity be equal to distance divided by time, which would be 10 circumferences divided by 10 seconds, or simply one circumference per second. Well, I know the radius. Circumference is... Uh, this formula is on my formula sheet, so if I don't remember it, I don't need to. Circumference is 2 pi r. Circumference is 2 pi r. So my circumference is 2 times pi times 1 meter. So I've got about 6.24 meters per second. So I'm going to say my velocity is 6.24, and they are even giving you the units, meters per second. All right, I got that. I'm going to label it down here. Velocity equals 6.24 meters per second. Now, the reason I do it in two steps, if you make a mistake here, and you, I don't know, forget to get two or do something stupid, but you use it properly down here, we can give you full credit for the second part of the problem. All right, now the second part. Calculate the magnitude of the centripetal force. Force centripetal. Okay, so the formula for force centripetal is mass times acceleration centripetal. Or, oh, wait, the acceleration centripetal is V squared over R. So force centripetal is mv squared over r. And then we start plugging in with units. We know our mass is 0 0.028 kilograms. Our velocity is 6.24 meters per second squared divided by 1 meter. And I'm getting a centripetal force of about... 1.09 uh, newtons. Now I'm using newtons simply because I know the unit of force is newtons. If I wanted to do dimensional analysis, I'd have kilograms meters squared per second squared per meter. Kilogram meters per second squared. Mass times acceleration. There's dimensional analysis for you. I love it.